doing now is just getting a bit of the, the last bit of fairing tidied up on the edge. These kids are playing in the back. I'm busy working. These men have been hard at work. I'm struggling to keep up with them. We're doing the water test to make sure all our windows and things aren't leaking. She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. So Ricky, what are you doing? I'm going to put the VHF material and the wind vane. As you can see the wind is pumping today. We're getting good reading. Mounted there and the VHF mounted up here. After the day was over prepping the moss, we made some spreader tips from a synthetic material. We then started ferrying our swim platform. Now is just getting a bit of the, the last bit of fairing tidied up on the edge, and then we'll do the bottom. But the bottom we don't put as thick. We just do a real thin layer on the spot where we see it's necessary. And the reason for that is because nobody will ever see it. it. Takes a heap lot of time to do it. Whenever you put a lot, you're gonna have a lot of sanding. But if, you, if you don't put enough. You're gonna have to put on again. I prefer the put on twice method. It is more work, but it does save you a bit on the product that's so expensive. See, like the bottom side, I'm probably gonna put a layer that's just, just thick enough to fill in all the little cavities. I'm just getting fairing on the areas that, that we had to glass so that you wouldn't notice because we obviously had to remove a lot of paint and there's a bit of filler and whatnot. But once you sand it down, that blends in precisely with the with the body. Now this is not a bad job, I don't mind it, but the sanding part that's coming, that's a bit. So Ricky, how many total liters of fairing compound have you gone through at this point and how many do you think are left to go? Um, oh, I think we've probably done about, yeah, close to 10 liters, 10, 12 liters of fairing compound. And I probably imagine, I'm hoping that this will be the last three liters that we're putting it out. We also had some visitors park next to us with the offshore vessel headed for Namibia. So Ricky's fared the entire time. Fairing had been complete and now we had to leave it to cure. So we have these stainless steel plates and these are what hold in the axles, the axle that has the sheaves. So this is stainless steel that sticks right against the aluminum. So when you do that, there's a lot of compounds you can use, but this is a acetyl delrin tape. And we're just putting a piece of this tape on the backs of this, so it electrically isolates it from the aluminum and that prevents it from corroding and getting the screws stuck in place.
Off to work while I edited, the men started finishing up our rigging. Looking sweet. I'm looking for something that Ricky hasn't already drank. Uh -huh. wow. These kids are playing in the uh, back. I'm busy working. So we're doing the, the heat annealed one and a super 12 from Southern Ropes. That's where we got this stuff from. Want some of their stuff? Give them a call. They're down in Cape Town. They got very good service. You can chat to a guy named uh, Romano. This is our chafe sleeve. You can also get it from them. Using a fit, you can just open it up to see what it looks like. And you put this over the Super 12 to protect it. If you want more information on this stuff, check out Luke from Kraken Structures. He also builds our dead eyes. These are our dead eyes. This is how we got them from uh, Kraken Structures. Super sexy. So, there's our port, dead eye. And I mean, Luke made these complete for us like this. Precisely to the same size diameter as our chain plates and everything with a beautiful protective cover. Uh, there's our starboard, it's just, I think I took, took this one off. He made us some original South African ones. How wicked is that? Super awesome. So these are going to be our dead eyes that we're going to use with lashings between the two points. I don't know much about this stuff. Kind of Luke just got you and he kind of explained all and we did learn how to do some splicing <laughs> so um, we did some splicing with Luke and he taught us the method and I only know like two methods now but um, it's good enough to get us past and, and fix all our rigging that we want for what we have we'll be able to do every single one that we need Big thanks to Luke from Kraken Structures These men have been hard at work. I'm struggling to keep up with them. Things are going good. I got my sauna glasses on. So tell me, Luke, what's on the agenda for today? So these screws right here, these ones fit okay. We're gonna replace those. But the biggest part, the biggest problem is these guys right here. So these were some old fittings. Um, this is where the mast headlight is. And we need to try to get, we're gonna try to drill these old screw bodies out because we wanna reuse these same holes. While Luke was busy drilling, Ricky and Moses got down to sanding our swim platform. Are you winning? That's all done. I put all the screws back. Everything's greased. And I got down to putting our last coat of varnish on our interior trims. So as you can see, we are dominating the plains of Africa. Look, the American Skywalker with us, camera in hand, ready to shoot the animals with some photos. Damn, always in the way. This is what you do in Africa when Things you need a tripod. You need to make your own tripod. <laughs> Luke, how does that monkey look? Looks like a monkey. It's a lacquer monkey, Luke. He's wearing his pluckies. <laughs> And as you can see, the monkey in his natural habitat. <laughs> it is the American tourist. <laughs> Camera stuck to his face. Rixum's left me behind. 
I have to go bloody find thing. How do you know that you're doing boat building? When your wife still has epoxy paint on the leg. Reasons why you should change to Dyneema. <laughs> probably not. It's probably some old cable that they got from somewhere. And? Gaan. Gaan. No. No. A. A. Coffee key. Coffee key. Drink. Drink. Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> The lacquer coffee. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the water test to make sure all our windows and things aren't leaking. We called in the fire brigade. Put the fire hose on. Run the fire hose. Mm -hmm. And the fire brigade's coming from the sky. So we're back on the boat now. We've finished all the all the rigging. Luke has taught us a whole bunch of things of, of making some cool rigging. Some of the dead eyes that, that Luke made that he brought from the US. Super cool stuff. So we let Luke talk and just give a brief overview of what, what everything's about. Well essentially the idea with Dynami uh, yeah, Dyneema rigging is that we we, we replace the stainless steel. The biggest the hugest advantage for most boats is no more metal, no more corrosion. After that, the, the rigging is a lot stronger. And then again, after that, the, the years, the lifespan, and the lower weight that's up high. So a lot of advantages. This boat was originally rigged with eight millimeter stainless yeah. steel, which had a maximum tensile strength of about four tons. Mm -hmm. And that's metric, guys. That's metric tons. Um, yeah. And this particular Dyneema in 10 millimeter has a maximum uh, breaking load of about nine, nine and a half tons. Nine and a half tons, yeah. From that's the southern rope spec. There's a lot of extra strength there, um, but really, it's it's the longevity of the material. So that's why what you're seeing on the outside, the black, is a Dyneema chafe sleeve. This will protect the core from UV as well as chafe. So um, we've spliced these, we use a locking Brummel splice, and we also completely cover everything, including around the eye with the chafe sleeve. And then this little uh, rack seizing here at the end is just a dressing, it just looks really nice because we've done some sewing with the cover. And um, it doesn't need it, but it looks really great. Because so, stitching is <clears throat> terrible. <laughs> yeah, my stitching wasn't too good, but... Um, but luckily we can we can cover it up real good. <laughs> and another big reason why we wanted to go with the Dyneema and I, and I told Luke about it was like, if something goes wrong, this is something that we can really fix anywhere. I'm really happy with, with what the results have turned out to be and we're actually gonna change all our uh, Dyneema. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the lifelines can be five millimeter Dyneema like this and it can also be covered, um, which is really strong. But one of the other things is cost too, right? Because yeah. if you go to a rigger and you purchase wire and you pay for the mechanical swaging, it's quite expensive, but um, when you do your, your splicing and you use dead eyes, dead eyes cost less than turnbuckles. Yeah. The material can cost less than wire, so there is cost savings. And you know, I'm still on the no corrosion, no corrosion. You know, yeah. uh, and we're super happy. I mean, we bought we bought quite a bit. Um, Southern Ropes gave us a real good deal, so a big thanks to the guys out at Southern Ropes. And um, we bought quite a bit extra and if someone breaks a stay somewhere we can help them out. And we actually just took for ourselves. we thought it was a good material to use for general things. We're going to try a lot of uh, soft shackles and, and just play with the material a lot and, and see how does it perform and all of that. So you guys have probably seen maybe in some of my other videos, um, you know, messing with the, the dead eyes and how they work. So essentially this is the dead eye portion. This uh, shackle, uh, which is, this is a, a eye strap style toggle. This connects to the original chain plate. This is roughly as long as the original turnbuckle is. And then at, this is sort of the business end of the dead eye. We have the lashing already spliced here. And this is the other end. And these two are gonna connect together with lashings and that's gonna give you mechanical advantage. We use the ship's main winches to pull the tension um, it does, it's a little more time consuming to tune the rig than it is with turnbuckles, but once you get it set, 
And um, you know, some of the difficult things to work with in Dyneema after you do the splicing is pre-tensioning. If you pre-tension these in what we put probably about a good metric ton yeah. of force, and that sets the Set splices and it takes the construction stretch out. So you don't have to deal with that. Um, there will be maybe a minute amount of stretch that we'll get from the first month or so of sailing, of loading at sailing loads. And then beyond that, the creep in Dyneema is, is extremely minuscule. So um, once we get the lashings up and frapping knots tied on really tight, I've got these covers. And these are off-the-shelf turnbuckle covers, but they perfectly fit the dead eye to protect that. Um, there's a lot of dirt in the shipyard environment, so we want to protect them. And then we just take a really, this is a simple rectangle, it's about a meter long, but it's got Velcro sewed on op uh, opposing sides, and it's just really a tube, and it's going to cover over the um, lashings. Uh, you don't have a lot of head cell chafe on no, the design no, no, no. of this particular rig, but it also protects from UV and it, and it looks really nice. So we'll and have a nice finish. And it's not a, it's not compulsory to have it. No, no. You could run it probably bare, and, and many boats run yeah. this bare. And the 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 you can run the Dyneema bare on the lashings. The the smaller Dyneema you use for the lashings isn't nearly expensive. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's easy to replace. Uh, you just lash a new piece. It takes about 10 meters of lashing to do, get your four loops, yeah. um, and then be able to dress it, and it'll it'll really look great and perform really well. And and for those of you guys that kind of just want to get back out on the water and the rigging is too expensive, you don't have to chafe sleeve everything. Um, obviously, this is the best way to do it, is chafe sleeve everything, protect it as long as possible, but I mean, if you just want to get out on the water, have some fun, and, and kind of get back into sailing, and you're too scared because your rigging looks old, kind of spend some time, send Luke a mail, he can, you can buy all the dead eyes from him and um, and then just set up with normal Dyneema, everything open and, and you, you'll be back on the water probably within a week. You uh, you can run uncovered Dyneema five to eight years uh, depending on the UV exposure and if you have a small boat, especially if it's a race boat, something that you always de-rig after you use it, the Dyneema is going to last a lot longer because that's not consistent UV mm -hmm. exposure. And in the smaller sizes like 5 mil and 6 mil, it's a lot less expensive than the 10 mil. So you don't have to cover it. Highly recommended, but you don't have to do it. And what do you think about it, huh? It looks really good. Our rigging is going to be top notch. It's going to be top notch? I mean... And it's going to be aesthetically pleasing as well to look at. Yeah, and, and, and Luke, uh, obviously. Um, he knew that 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 uh, the port and starboard colors, so he made sure that we stay in check with our, yeah. our colors and the color. <laughs> if you're gonna put color code, you get colors. You just gotta like figure something out. But no, they're pretty wicked, man, and I think they add to the African flavor. Part of our color, our flag colors. So I think it's wicked. Really it's gonna be awesome. So thanks, guys. Check Luke's page out. A link um, is in the description below. Yeah. And we'll give you all the information if you need to ask Luke any questions and are interested in. Some dead eye. Yeah. Sweet. So, big thanks again, Southern Ropes, uh, for and the pricing. Luke. And to Luke for coming out to South Africa, helping us out for the week. He came to do rigging, but he ended up doing boat building. And we had an awesome time with him. So, big thanks to him. And uh, hope to see you again. And I thank you great. guys a lot. I had a really great time. You guys are awesome. It was it was just a really good experience. And I enjoy helping. It was cool. Awesome, man. Appreciate well, we're it. glad you enjoyed your time. Yeah. Don't Have forget to like. Yeah. Give us a like. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Heck yeah. You guys have an awesome one. Enjoy. Toodaloo. Cheers. Stay tuned till next week where we start our floors. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. Share this with your friends and family as well. We appreciate it. If you would like to join our awesome patron family, a link is provided in the description below. If you would like to make a one-time donation towards Saving Lady Africa, a link is also in the description below.